Hello, my name is Blanche White, and I am a salt chlorination activist. For a while now, you've heard me talk about the many benefits of salt chlorination, how it's a more natural approach to chlorinating your pool, how it delivers the most amazing swimming experience, how it leaves your pool water silky soft with no chemical odor, and how it lets you say goodbye to itchy skin, red eyes, and bleached clothing. Well now, thanks to Salt and Swim from Hayward Pool Products, salt chlorination is not only affordable, but it's easy to install too. In this video, I'll show you how to install Salt and Swim in as little as 20 minutes. There's no gluing of pipes required, and Hayward's easy to use installation kit provides virtually everything that you'll need. Before you unpack your Salt and Swim, make sure you have confirmed the following that you have an in-ground pool with less than 25,000 gallons of water, that you have a 120 volt GFCI outlet available within 18 feet of your pool's equipment pad, that you have at least 10 inches of straight pipe between the last piece of equipment installed on your pool pad and your pool, and that your pool water is balanced and that you have added the proper amount of salt. Refer to the included chemistry quick start guide for information on how to prepare your pool water for salt and swim operation. If any of these prerequisites have not been met, your salt and swim may not be right for you. Contact your local pool professional for other salt chlorination options from Hayward. Salt and swim includes the following components. A control box, a cutting template, a mounting template for the control box, mounting screws, a cell cap and cord, a strap wrench, a salt cell, a cell vessel and retaining nut, and two different nut assemblies, one for two inch plumbing and another for one and a half inch plumbing. Each nut assembly is made up of three individual pieces, a compression ring, a collar, and the nut itself. The only other tools you'll need are a saw for cutting the pipe, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a drill. Before installing your salt and swim, you want to plan the location of both the cell and the control box. The control box should be installed within three feet of your GFCI outlet, close enough for the power cord to reach. It should also be installed within 15 feet of the cell itself. Most pool equipment configurations look something like this, where the water coming out of the pool travels through a pump, then a filter, and perhaps a heater before returning to the pool. Make sure that the salt and swim cell is installed after all of the equipment on your pool pad and before the water returns to the pool. Note that the cell can be installed in either a horizontal or a vertical configuration. Just make sure that the vessel is positioned so that the cell can be easily inserted and removed. Use the included cutting template to determine whether or not you have enough straight pipe available to install the cell. Turn off the power to your pool's pump. The control box is housed in a rain-tight enclosure that is suitable for outdoor mounting. Do not lock any of the control box's four sides, since this could cause the unit to overheat. Mount the control box on a post or a flat surface using the included hardware. Use the included mounting template to locate and drill the fastener holes. Screw in the top fasteners, leaving a space of one eighth of an inch between the screw head and the surface. Hang the control box on the top fasteners. Then, screw in the bottom fasteners securely. The provided cutting template indicates exactly where to cut your existing pipe in order to install the salt and swim cell, so there's no need to guess or measure. Place the cutting template on the pipe at the location where the salt and swim cell will be installed. The entire cutting template must fit on the pipe or the cell vessel will not fit. The cutting template has two sets of pre-cut notches on the left side and two more on the right side. Mark each of the pre-cut notches on the cutting template. The first or outermost set of marks are inspection marks that will tell you later whether the cell has been installed properly. And the second or innermost marks will tell you where to cut the pipe. Using a saw suitable for cutting PVC pipe, Cut the pipe in the two places indicated by the cutting template. These will be the innermost marks on the left and right hand side of the pipe. Make sure to clean any shavings that may be left on the cut pipe. Depending on the diameter of your plumbing pipe, 
select either the two inch or one and a half inch nut assembly to secure the cell to the pipe. Place the proper size nut on each side of the cut pipe as shown with the screw threads facing the cut end of the pipe. Then place the compression ring on the pipe followed by the collar. Make sure you add the nut assembly components to the pipe in this order. Position the compression ring directly over the second marks on the left and right hand sides of the pipe. Verify that the black rubber gaskets are positioned on either side of the vessel. Install the vessel by fastening the nuts to either side of the vessel where the pipe has been cut away. Hand tighten the nuts for a snug fit. Using the included strap wrench, tighten an additional one quarter turn. If the vessel has been installed correctly, the first or outermost marks you made with the cutting template should not be visible. Verify that the O-ring is attached and positioned at the top of the cell. Place the cell into the vessel. Push the cell cap and attached cable through the retaining nut. The cell cap contains a key that corresponds to a slot on the cell itself. The key will automatically align with the slot when the cap is placed on the cell. Place the cell cap on the cell. Secure the cap to the vessel with the retaining nut. Hand tighten only. Restore power to your pump. Run the pump for five minutes. Check for leaks and then turn off the pump. Plug the line cord for the control box into an outlet. After being powered on for the first time, Salt and Swim will run a diagnostic routine which can take up to 30 seconds. During this time, various indicators may turn on and off. When the diagnostic routine is finished, Salt and Swim will display a blinking inadequate water flow indicator and a solid standing by indicator. This is perfectly normal. While Salt and Swim is powered, turn the filter pump on, running the pump for at least 20 seconds. Turn the filter pump off and leave off for 10 seconds. Salt and Swim should now display a solid inadequate water flow indicator and a solid standing by indicator. Now you can turn on your filter pump and begin normal operation. See, it's so fast and easy to install, you'll have plenty of time to soak up the sun. Come on in kids, the water is fine. We hope this video has been helpful. For additional information, please refer to the Salt and Swim installation manual.